G'day and welcome back to Torment Tides of Ranmanera. We have made it all the way into the very heart of the bloom. We have fought its way past its defenses, choked off its resources, and freed Mazoff the Lost, who was is the scholar that we were actually sent to retrieve. And in doing so, also learned that the Memovira is in fact the first cast off, merely disguised. Mazov rises, clutching himself as he properly vomits forth a clot of black fluid onto the glistening flesh beneath his feet. Small red wounds marred the flesh between the wires crisscrossing his ch skin. Gods! Gods! He looks up at you, his mechanical eye sockets spin, wheels within wheels, focusing on your face. You're the cast-off that was riding Zarian Daywalker. What the hells are you doing here? How did you recognize me? Muscle movements, he says, grimacing. Small variations on expression. Good as a signature for those who know what to look for. <coughs> you didn't answer me. What are you doing down here? Thought I was rescuing someone named Ishan, but here you are instead. Yeah, that's me. It's a nickname. Sure, for Ishan is a... Because I look like one. Whatever it is. No one calls me that, except... He pauses and smirks. First sent you, didn't she? Not surprised. She won't be getting the resonance chamber working on her own. All too easy to destroy the damn thing if you don't know what you're doing. Something about her, the words said in his voice does a memory within you. Resonance chamber. Resonance chamber. The sensation builds. He winces. Teeth clenched. Guts. Bloom's terrible host. Stuck its damn tongues into my duck, guts to force feed me. Filled my lungs with bile. Not sure what you did to get me out, but, but thank you. <laughs> he spits a black-tinged wad of phlegm over his shoulder. Well, how do we get out of here? She's waiting. You know how she is. Hold on. How did you get actually end up a prisoner to begin with? Bloom took me. Not a surprise. Not happy with the first, but you already knew that. It took me because it knows I'm important to her. He says this casually without the faintest hint of pride. Anyway, should get back to the first. She's going to be, well, you know. I didn't know. I don't know, actually. I thought I was working for the Memovira until a few minutes ago. His expression goes on. Skissed. Look, don't tell her I said anything. I don't need anyone shouting at me right now, let alone her. This is the worst headache I've ever had. But a headache is uncoiling through your head now as well. Alarm spreads over Mazov's face. He reaches out to catch you as you topple forward. You're underwater. The fading pulse of a sonar alarm ripples through the water, then is gone. An invisible pressure crushes your body, squeezing your head. A gibra with a cast-off statue rises to confront you. I should have known. You need something of ours to finish your residence chamber, don't you, father? You haven't learned anything. You would sacrifice all of us for a chance at survival. You in the first. Pride blinds you both. You're wrong, Tom. You snarl, yet his words frighten you. Is he saying the Marilels are alive with their own plans to stop the sorrow? She must be stopped. Any plan of hers would be dangerous. I built the residence chamber to save us all. It has the power to weaken the sorrow. I can kill the creature. A half-truth. The chamber certainly has a power. Who knows it would, if it would be enough to kill. Will you apologize to me then, selfish child? Will you beg my forgiveness? You lie. You always have, says Tom calmly. Though your motives differ, Marilyn's plan and yours will have the same end. The destruction of every last cast-off. I will not allow this to happen. He makes a complicated gesture with his fingers and the pressure in your head increases. Tom's voice grows muffled and fades as, as your mind, your size consciousness, flees his imprisoned body, abandoning it to the Gibra in favor of a new host. You return to consciousness, your, fa your mouth tastes of seawater, or blood. Light and wet heat bathes the side of your face as the bloom opens a transdimensional portal. You can't be sure where it leads, but it's certainly hold your only way out. Someone, Mazov, is bracing you, holding you up. You're all right. Mazov, what is the first plan with the chamber? To sever the... Oh, I know. You know, you should ask her. I don't know enough about what's going on here. Just know that it'll be enough to free us from the sorrow without sucking us all into someone else's mind. Should be enough. She can't do it without me, though. Best be getting back. Patting you awkwardly, he limps past you into the portal and vanishes. It's only when he's gone that you see the glittering contours of a small object lying where Mazov was standing. A mare caster must have fallen from Mazov's pockets. You wipe the slime from the joints of the machine and add it to your belongings. Frictionless Maircaster. We will totally use that right after this. Continue. Alright, so I should go and talk to the Memovira. I probably shouldn't hang around in the center of the bloom who hates me. 
but I'm going to do this anyway. The spherical object is made of an unfamiliar gold greenish metal. The object seems to be constantly moving, rotating in different directions. But when you hold it, you can't feel the slightest hint of friction. You feel the click and whirl of countless mechanisms moving within the device, generating an almost intolerable heat. The smoke cast is hot to the touch. You feel the click and whirl of countless mechanisms moving beneath your hands. You've the urge, urge to explore the mechanism is as palpable as dust. First, let's have a look at it. The clicking of the mechanisms within the device is a rhythmic thing, like a drumbeat, like soldiers marching in perfect, helpless unison. Alright, let's use it. As your consciousness coalesces, you find yourself in an underground bunker which is shaking from an attack far above. You stand mid-salute in front of a cast-off encased in, articulate, in an articulated metal carapace. It's so skeletal, you remember it. Uh, you doubt he could move without it. You remember his name is Lovak, Paj Rekans, second in command in the endless battle. Three advisors sit behind him. Lovak shakes his synth encased head and addresses you. Don't worry about the message, Barakial. It's been rendered moot. We're just lucky Commander Rekan made it out of Mielavest, alive. She missed the destruction of the sanctuary by moments. Wow, this is a recent memory then. A thunderous explosion rocks the bunker, sending everyone staggering. As you can see, we have troubles of our own. Lovak says, getting back to his feet, the changing god's latest ploy has paralyzed the reconciler of truth. Of course, heaven's rejoinder remains functional, which means we cannot reverse their successes, while they can reverse ours. He leads you to a strategy table showing a three-dimensional projection of a battlefield across parallel realities. He swipes through several images, all of them showing an army on the verge of defeat. We are in more danger now of losing this war than since the first died. I must, I'm afraid I must send you out again, Berekiel. We must save the Reconciler. How did the massacre at Mielavest happen? How did the shields come down? I don't know. Maybe the Sorrow finally grew strong enough to smash through. Maybe there was a traitor. I've heard nothing. Um, what are the Reconciler of Truth and Heaven's Rejoinder? Again? Ah. I guess one of the hazards of dancing so often through realities and times that it plays hell with memory. Don't worry, I'll explain it once more. Centuries ago, when the first still lived, she found the Reconciler, a machine of the ancient that allowed the user to look at multiple versions of recent events and lock reality onto the one they found they liked best, making it the only reality. With it, she began choosing realities which would won more battles than we'd lost and quickly drove the changing god to his defeat. To the brink of his defeat, in fact. Until, that is, he acquired his own machine, Heaven's Rejoiner, which can undo the Reconciler's realities and make its own. Since then, our war has become one of faint and counterfeit, of competing and collapsing realities, where no battle is ever entirely won or completely lost, and where both sides always look for a final advantage. And it seems as if the Chalcedon, the Changing God's general, may have found his advantage at last. With the Reconciler sabotage and the Heavens Rejoiner well defended, we may never turn the tide. Okay, I'm ready to serve. Excellent. Friends, what are your suggestions? How do we undo what has been done to the Reconciler without using the Reconciler? A scarred female cast off in red armor speaks up. I recommend an all out assault on the position with Heavens Rejoiner. This will, of course, fail, but will give cover for Barakiel to slip through the paths of the white nest and re reach the rejoinder from behind. There she can reset it and destroy it. Then we will be the only one who can change history. A male mutant, exquisitely beautiful except for a second mouth in his throat, speaks. I suggest Barakiel use the reality storm that ravages no man's land to find the reconciler's saboteur. If she can navigate the shifting shard, she can stop the saboteur before he reaches it. This will only return us to the status quo, of course, but it will be easier for Barakiel to deal with one man than the deadly white nests. Any other suggestions? I approve either path. As it is you who will face these challenges, I will leave it to you to do to choose. Tell me more about these white nests. 
The white nests are catacombs where the Chalcedon breeds the Strathian Warmers, a horrible place. I don't know what the tunnels were originally used for, but now they are a tangled web of mess of webs and larvae. It's filled with traps, since the energy knows its tunnels are a vulnerable approach. But the real danger is the moths themselves, horrible creatures whose phosphorescent glow withers the flesh and maddens the mind. Once they sense your presence, they will not rest until you are dead, and it will not be an easy approach by any means. Alright, tell me about the reality stone. We and the Changing God have used the Reconciler of Truth and Heaven's Rejoined us so much, and at such cross purposes that there are places in the no man's land where no single reality holds sway. Fractures, ripples of possibility drift across the battlefield like squalls of rain, changing all in their path and offering entry into other times and versions of the presence. Of course, one enters, when one enters a different version of reality, then all shards one encounters in that reality are different too. It's a less deadly route, but it's possible to be lost forever in such a maze. I'll make my way through the white nests. Anything to end an endless battle, I guess. Any uh, objections to Barakel's choice? If she is brave enough to face the moths, then we are brave enough to commit our troops. And with luck, when she has successfully reset the rejoinder, the battle will not have happened before at all, and the troops will be safe. Oh, that was a different person. Very well. I'll make your preparations. When you are ready, we will begin. Two days and two long marches later, you and the Lovax army with 50 Ks from the Changing Guard territory. While the army continues in one direction, Lovax takes your arm and points you towards the ravine. Your path lies here. Follow this rift for a kilometre, and you'll find Captain Hugo Igaret waiting for you. He knows the white nests better than any man. He'll help you through them. After that, you're on your own. I'll do what's needed. Good luck, Bruna. You enter the ravine and it leads away from the fighting, getting deeper as it goes. Finally, at a point so narrow that the walls almost shut out the sky, a man leading two ergovore hounds step out of a cave and cracks a smile. The skinny small man has dark brown eyes that looked friendly. He seemed to fit, sit in bottomless sockets, an impression encouraged by his prominent nose and wide smile. All this surrounded by a long, thick, straight black hair in which some grey shimmers. You can feel his wit in the air around him as if radiated by every cell in his body. Okay. Hello, sunshine. You must be Brachial. I'm Hugo Igrich. Nests are through here, but before we go in, let me tell you what we're up against. The tunnels are mined at every intersection, sometimes with detonation ciphers, sometimes with plain old explosives. My dogs here can eat energy blasts, but they'll die on regular mines like we will, so it's best to check what we're walking into. Trouble is, the longer we're in here, the more likely the moths are going to find us. So take, we take too many wrong turns and we're in trouble. You do not want to fi fight Strathrain Walmoss, so no shilly-shallying. Right, in we go. So I'm guessing we enter here. Um, so most direct path is forward left, straight, right, straight, um, left. That's what I'm thinking. Because I'm thinking we don't want to go in the chamber with the moths. Uh, we probably don't want to go in web chambers. We can, we'll deal with the shrooms. We'll deal with the chessboard or whatever it is. We'll deal with the houses. And yeah, this kind of avoids the moth bits. The cave narrows as you enter, then widens against a stone wall with a man-high uh, crack in it. Igrish lets his dogs go through first, then turns sideways and edges through after them. You do the same and find yourself in an L-shaped tunnel with uh, covered in silk moths, in, sorry, in moss silk and bones. Essentially, the place makes your eyes water, so you can go south, uh, you can go west or north. Yes, we're definitely in this corner. We will go north. This room glows green with light of phosphorescent mushrooms. They grow on everything. The floor, the rocks of tumbles on the ceil from the ceiling, the bodies of soldiers that lie pressed up against the walls as if thrown there. They grow on the open archways that leave the room north, west, and south. So somewhere hidden among the mushrooms is a trap, but you can't see what kind without testing. Let's determine what kind it is. It contains an explosive mine. Diffuse the explosive. Okay, now we go west. The room's towering echoey space, vaulted ceilings almost lost in the darkness above. Grave markers lie like game pieces on a uh, checkered floor. All are webbed in moth silk. The exits on all four walls 
west, east, northwest, east, and south. You know there's a trap hidden amongst the graves. See what it is. Check what it is. Uh, it's an explosive mine. Defuse the explosive, and then we will go west. Okay, we've got an intersection. Check the intersection. Uh, enter the room without disarming the cipher because the dog should eat it. Yep, dogs eat it. Fantastic. Cipher was detonated. Thick lot of dust. Go north. This room has collapsed and only held off, off the ground by a few stone sarcophagi. If you squat down, you can see their exits on north, south, east, and west. Uh, but you're going to have to crawl, and you also don't know what kind of trap is here. Check what kind of trap is here. Energy detonation cipher. So we want to go enter the room without disturbing the cipher. And then we want to go north. Yep. Except for the muted light, we can see things. We know that there's a trap here. Um, it's unnaturally dark, a constant hiss, mutterings of treachery. To tell me what type of trap, that's fine. Uh, okay, so four must show up. We'll have to fight them if we want to survive. So attack, and we will fight them. Remaining must come for us again. We will fight them one more time. And then force try to force our way past them and escape, or we can try and fight again. Fighting again has a problem of we really can't do it. Send in the hounds. Poor hounds don't survive. Okay. Diffuse the cipher. Go west. Okay. Check the traps, defuse the trap, go north, and leave. We've made it. You stumble from the tunnels into a quiet, oppressively hot cavern. The sky above you is filled with towering clouds, and in the distance you can hear the sounds of furious battle. The you know, behind enemy lines, and in the place where the Chalcedon hides, the heavens rejoined her. Unfortunately, it's not here. You look around desperately. It's definitely the place. You've seen it many times on ordnance maps. The massive toad-like machine that's meant to be crouching in the center of the canyon is not where it's meant to be. It's not even any sign it's ever been here. No imprint, no broken ground, nothing. Nor are the men and constructs that are meant to guard it. There's no one and nothing here. Search for the rejoinder. Search more thoroughly for the rejoinder. Search again for the rejoinder. And we've got to return to Levac. You return, you retrace your steps with the whiteness and return to Levex Bunker. He greets you with open arms and a smile. Success, my friend, whatever you did. Our Reckon's Hyler is operational once again, and we've recovered our recent losses. I have told Pudge Reckon of your heroism, and she wants to thank you personally. Go to her now. She is in the bloom, meeting with the Memavira. I believe she has more work for you there. But, sir, Heaven's Rejoinder wasn't there. I did nothing. What? Are you, are you joking? Well, if you say it's not, then I believe you. We must have done something, for we're back to before we uh, were before your sabotage. You want my theory? Your success forced the Chalcedon to revert to a reality where the Reconciler was never touched. You had to give us the Reconciler back in order to keep the Heavens rejoinder. That's the endless battle for you, mysterious and elliptical. In any event, you acquitted yourself well, deserving of Commander Reckon's summons. Thank you, sir. I'll go to the bloom now. Thank you, Commander. My regards to uh, thank you. My regards to the Commander. With the bow, you leave the bunker and make your way to the the Xai Drake Roost. There, you mount the Drake, and the grooms have settled uh, for you and fly towards Sacred Cliffs. When you reach it, you bank down into its shadows and land near the living, glistening mountain of flesh that is the Bloom. The guard at the entrance nearest at uh, the nearest orifice tells you the way to the Memavira's fortress, and after entering and traveling through the Bloom's viscera and ventricles, you reach your gates. Her guards admit you without a word, and you're ushered into an antechamber and told to wait. And you, uh, from behind the door, you hear the voice of Padrek and raised in frustration. If the sorrow is strong enough to enter Mia Levest, then it's our primary enemy. We must either finish the chain and go quickly, or unite with him to destroy it. A voice you recognize as the Memavira's answers. You have it reversed, sister. We will use the sorrow to destroy the changing god. All we must do is turn it his way. I am to take this message to the survivor. I should let the monster which killed us walk three, hoping it might strike our enemy first. Why don't you tell them, sister? Why not reveal yourself at last? 
It isn't the time. She cuts off as she sees you. Who is this? Ah, Barakiel, a loyal blade who you asked me to send for. Seems she's already learned your secret. And she had better be loyal indeed. Barakiel, may I present the first? Our brave leader. So brave, she's hidden from behind my skirts for over a hundred years. Enough, Pudge. I ask you, to reckon, to bring me her best. In the coming days, we will have need of an agent who will act without flinching. No matter the order. Is that to you, Barakiel, or are you ready to do anything to stop the changing god? And I can just, like, straight up attack her now. Um, I will go with, I am honored to be chosen, but my loyalty is to the commander I've known for all these years. I will do as Pudge orders. Then I shall have to trust that Pudge lo remains loyal to me, won't I? General, what are your orders for your blade? Brachiel, protect the fast and follow our orders in all things. As of now, she is your commander, not I. At first of, as the first welcomes you, a force like a fist begins to wrench you back to your own body. The last thing you hear is your new commander saying, The last child is coming, Barakiel. We must be prepared. Okay, cool. That helps gear us up for that. And let's talk to the Abacus. The creature is be gorging itself on the transmensional energies of the heart. Pays no attention to you. Alright, so the Bloom's letting us out. It was a cool mare. I'm pretty happy with it. Oh, we're back here. So, what do we have? And what are things that we could do? We could check then, at this point, if there's anything else to do. Because basically we've got Return of the Memovira. Um... And yeah, other things. Preservation of beauty, not going to do it. Uh, covetous heart. So yes, we will. I thought we'd already done that one. Hey, Draco Jen. I'd like to ask a few more questions. Um, actually, no, never mind. Don't care about this. Not so fast about that. Although I can rest, actually. I'd like to sleep here. There we go. We're fully ready to rumble. Alrighty. Also saved the game. This has nothing left for us. No. Okay. Um, we could... So basically, what we've got right now is we could go and check various things. Actually, yes, there's something I definitely want to do. I want to talk to the spec because we've got the hammer of Chila the Great. And that sounds like a really interesting thing to do. So basically, I'm going to go there and then I'm going to check for other changes, right? So Inkpot is gone. We killed him. Grisla, the merchants are gone, so we'll talk to Grisla as well. But first, I'm going to talk to you. Ioksu. How's Angen? That scalpel that bears your mark. I, I found a power source for it. The scalpel? Where did you find this? This is among the first devices I found to test the bloom. A transdimensional blade that could cut its flesh cleanly and protect, preserve it for study. Yet a thief removed it from my care. An abacus that entered my dwelling and absconded. The technology is old, however. Improvements are possible. For the price of 190 shims, which will cover the cost of imported material, the scalpel can become much more effective, more dangerous. Go for it. Modifications are as follows. Improve... Power along the blade, though the energy and cost efficiency ratio remain the same, perhaps slightly improved. Sharper edge of the blade, and ergonomic update for human fingers. Fantastic. I don't know why I couldn't talk to you about that before. But let's have a look see. Oh, I lost the blade as a result. So. Um, yep, all good. Cuts through dimensions, which casts down on resistances. Wield against phased, and also you can do other things with it. Yes. yes. I wanted it mostly for cutting through the um, the monster, and and it's done a fine job at that. In fact, okay. 
Now going and chatting with Chilla the Great. The old Memavira is still wandering around. That's fine. Can I finally like kick off some of these other things? And it's gone. Yep. That seems reasonable. Let's talk to the observant spec. Few have returned alive and whole from the depths, and yet here you are. I never doubted you, cast off. I found this hammer outside the bloom's heart. I think it belonged to Chila. Her eyes widened. Yes, it is. But she never would have left it behind. Did you see Chilla? Was she there? Can it be? Has she returned? No. She'd have never parted with that. It must be this a fake. I saw human bones with silver scales around them. That can't be right. The whispers said she'd come back. The speck's voice is very, very soft, and for the first time you can't hear the chittering of the bloom behind her words. She sways on her feet, trying to steady herself. No. They've lied. How long have they lied? Am I even who I... No. I don't know for sure that she's dead, but if I've learned anything in the bloom... Um, no. I'm going to go with... The bloom's playing games with your mind. You know, reach out with your arms to support her. You gently wrap your arms around the speck's trembling shoulders. She's even tinier and frailer than she, you realized. Or perhaps she's only become so now. Why would they lie? Why reveal themselves now? What purpose does it serve? Am I the speck? Was I someone else before? Was, why was the bloom keeping me here? What does it want? Who am I? Um... I, yeah, that's pretty sad. You're a story keeper, a, a teller, a keeper of legends, even if Sheila is dead, her stories are worth preserving. I thought I was telling these stories so people would know her when she's when she returned, but and but she's gone and all my words remain. Uh, un, uh, sorry, my words are all that remain. I, I suppose that's a legacy of sort, but not the one I would have chosen. Okay. That was cool to do. I liked it. Um... Still thinking about what happened down there, you know, in the heart of this place, this thing, this place. Yeah. The blooms are like the perfect place to sacrifice myself, but I'm whole. I'm alive, and not through lack of trying. It's surprising. You, you want to die? Yes. Well, no. I, I want to almost die, or die and come back from the dead at the last minute. Yes, that's it. But instead, I keep on living. It's, it's disappointing. Like death itself has stopped paying attention to me. You're not dying so long as I'm around. That doesn't make any sense. We all die. Some of us sooner than others. Sooner than we'd really, we'd really like. It's almost as though you had your own story in this. A separate one. That mine isn't the only one worth hearing. Be honest with me. Am I the only hero or not? Uh, I'm going to go with we're all heroes. And we protect people until they can be heroes too. Eris's aura reignites, but it's not his normal manic blow, glow. The timbre of it has changed somehow. Yes, that must be it. A hero, then, not only makes stories, but protects others as well. Gives them time to let their stories grow. The hero has a new and noble purpose. We don't like it. Of course you don't. Uh, how are things between us? You don't even need to ask. I, I think we were twins if we didn't have different parents. I love Eris so much. He's so good. Makina, how you doing? I knew there was a reason I never got along with the Memovira. Why she always seemed to be mocking me. It's because she knew who I was. She knew that she planned her betrayal all along. And she was right next to me. I should have slit her throat. I should have shoved her into a maw. I will slit her throat, even if it's my last act in this world. She's been hiding this long. She must have plans. We need to take that into account. She didn't count on you. I'm sure of it. You're unraveling that skein of lies. She grabs your shirt and pulls you close. She's the creator of our problems. She sent us to the Bloom's heart to be rid of us, because she knew we'd either find Mazoff or die. Either way, she comes out ahead. So now we need to change those plans. I have faith in you, kid. You and me, we're going to stop that bitch. Come on, let's go. How are you holding up? I'll stick with you, blah blah blah. Carol's Deach. How are you holding up? I adore you. I can't say it more simply. Okay. Let's talk about you again. Is there anything else? 
No, never mind. These two. Welcome back. Oh, you return. I hope something's wrong with you, by which I mean that we get to treat you, by which I mean, of course, that you are fascinating, just fascinating. I wanted to let you know that Obovich's eye just restored a blind woman's sight. It did? I mean, of course it did. Remarkable. I pity we didn't think to try that with another subject sooner. Indeed, we have no unbreakable guarantee on the efficacy of our cures. He turns and whispers to Demeray, they're not li they're loudly enough you can hear. That was lucky, was it not? I hoped, but did not know. Now, how can I help you? Um, can you tell me? No, don't care about these things. Yeah, that's it. Nothing useful. Yep, still here. Where did the merchants go? On their business. Themselves, fellas pay well, but that's all, uh, that's all the good I got to say for them. I guess I'll be moving on soon. Got enough shins to help me over for a while. Alright. I need to know about Moors and how they work. Need to know. Moors the door, see? A living door. Connection between the bloom, somewhere in the bloom, and another place. Other place might be around the corner, another world. Need to know. What's she doing here? And does the member very know about her? Yeah. Okay. And yeah, they all want something. Might be your legs. Cool, cool. Alrighty. Well, that's it. Uh, there, there was nothing else new to find around the place, so uh, we'll end the episode here. And next time around, we will head to the Memavira's Fortress to chat with the first. Until next time, have a fantastic day.